Then, thank you. All right, we are recording. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, as Kat said, we're going to get started, but feel free to use the Google Doc to let me know who you are and where you're coming in from. Um, I'm glad you're here. All right. Just telling me that it's being recorded. All right. Hey, Scott, thanks so much for joining. All right, so I am Emily Lytle. I just joined the innovation team here at RJI. I'm very new, just been here about a month and a half, uh, but I'm excited to talk to you all about what I've been up to um, and what innov innovation and focus is all about. Uh, so I pulled together a little presentation here with maybe a little bit too much cheese, but um, that is the way we're gonna do it because here um, I've got a little intro slide about who I am and where I'm coming from. Uh, so I was working in Delaware as a local reporter uh, for Gannett newspapers. So I was mostly working for Delaware Online, the News Journal in Wilmington. Uh, I was covering, at the end there, I was covering the Delaware beaches. So here is me on the beach uh, holding my photographer's camera as we lugged everything up and down the beach in 90 degree weather. She was very happy with me that day. Um, and we, so I covered the Delaware beaches down here. Um, and it was really fun. I told, there's a lot of great stories uh, down at the beaches in Southern Delaware. Uh, and, but I started out my career working at the Dover Post, uh, which was owned by Gatehouse and then Gatehouse merged with Gannett shortly after I joined them there. Uh, and I was a community reporter filling a very small weekly newspaper by myself, essentially. Um, and so I have a lot of experience in community news, local news, uh, even in a, in a shorter career. Um, but I've also seen a lot of the changes that have been happening uh, in news. And so that's why I was excited to join the innovation team here at RJI. Uh, and kind of look at how what the future news looks like and what we can do to support journalists doing this work uh, uh, because it's important. Um, a little bit more about me. I went to school at, in D.C. at American University. I'm from Pennsylvania, this little corner outside of Philly, um, and then spent the past four years living in Delaware. And now I'm living in Columbia, Missouri, um, and uh, learning all about the Midwest and uh, working here at Mizzou. Um, these are my siblings and I grew up on a farm. <laughs> so just some fun facts to start off. Uh, so innovation focus, why you all came here today uh, to learn about what we're doing here. So uh, innovation and focus is a part of RJI. Uh, we do monthly experiments uh, where we partner with newsrooms either across the country or newsrooms right here, the professional newsrooms on campus at Mizzou. And we test out new and practical ideas to support support journalists. So this could be anything from some new tech that just came out or a new app or tools uh, that are going to help journalists do their job and hopefully support them and make their, their job easier or better. Um, and so that is a little bit about what we're doing, but I will definitely give some examples because I think it's a lot easier to wrap your head around who we are and what we're doing um, when you can know what we're what, what that looks like. Um, so before I get into that, though, I will do an early pitch that we have a newsletter starting this spring. Uh, so if you want to sign up and, and get on our list, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, there's a sign up link in the Google Doc, uh, but there's also a link here and and we can we can put it in the chat probably too uh, before we're done. Uh, but I definitely recommend signing up for our newsletter so you can stay in touch with all that we're doing. Um, so this is kind of just a summary of like, what does it mean? What does innovation and focus mean? Well, when journalists don't have the time, the resources to try out the latest app, to try out the new data visualization tool, we can come in and try it um, with them and support them in that and see how it goes and then communicate what we learned with the industry. Um, and so some examples of what that looks like, um, the first project that we've done uh, while I've been here was on transcription services. So this was our project for February. Uh, it started out as an idea of, hey, a lot of people use Otter. 
uh, for their transcribing interviews, but what are some other options that are out there? Because we were finding that Otter is a little bit limited when it came to its free version, and uh, it did not provide non-English transcriptions. Um, so we chose five different uh, transcription services to test. We partnered with the radio station KBIA here uh, in Columbia, and we tested uh, different transcription services with that audio interview and compared how they measured up. Um, so that is um, what we have tested so far um, here. I just kind of walked through what our process looks like. Uh, this was helpful for me as I was figuring out what innovation and focus is all about. Um, so we started out with our idea of, hey, let's try out some different options besides Otter. Um, and then we tested these different transcription services and wrote about what we learned. And then at the end, after we do that, we also talk to somebody who is an expert in that topic that, that we were exploring. And so for this example, we interviewed someone who was already testing a different transcription service um, and specifically trying to see how well they performed with multiple languages because he worked in a newsroom that produced content in five different languages. Um, and so that was really interesting to talk to him about that. Um, but I have some more examples because I haven't been here very long. Uh, so we only have that one project while I've been here, but Innovation Focus has been doing some really cool work. Um, and I wanted to share some of that with you. So one another example is the Innovation and Focus team explored augmented video uh, with KOMU, which is here in, in Columbia as well. Um, and so this, this little screen video kind of shows you what that, that article looks like after, after they tested it. Um, so I can pause that and go back a little bit. Um, oops, maybe. All right, there we go. Um, so as you go through, it'll show you that this is the tips and tricks. They It kind of just walks you through their process and say, hey, we partnered with KOMU. Here's what we learned. Here's the tool that we used. And um, here's some tips that we learned as we went through this process. Um, so I just thought that was a good example to show you kind of how we explain what we do and, and what we learn uh, through these different experiments. Um, another example is they tested out how to create infographics without having to hire a graphic designer. Uh, so what tools are out there that you can use if um, to make really snazzy graphics that are engaging and helpful, um, but also accessible to people who may not have the, that training. Um, and so here's some examples of the different tools that they tested. Um, and like there's Google charts and an animated one and Visme and Picto charts. So um, they had examples and tips and tricks from each one of those. Um, and this is the last example that I have on here, I believe. Um, everyone is always talking about TikTok and short videos. It's a hot topic for the past couple of years. Um, and so RJI likes to be on top of what the trends are, but also like be able to provide helpful information um, as people are, are kind of figuring this out. So uh, TikTok is a good example of that. And this is one of the stories of a few that the innovation and focus team did where they provided five tips um, that, or five ways that newsrooms can utilize TikTok. Um, and, and some tips for, for going about it. So it's a good starting point for newsrooms, just kind of figuring that out. Um, but we're always thinking about our next idea as well. Um, and so what we're working on now is we are trying to figure out ways that newsrooms, especially nonprofit newsrooms that have their content out for free uh, for anyone to use, how these newsrooms can track where their stories are republished um, because a lot of newsrooms have a way for sharing that content, but they don't have a lot of a lot of great methods for knowing where that content goes. And so we've been exploring different ways of doing that uh, with 
uh, incorporating tracking pixels into the HTML that someone copies and pastes into their own CMS, um, using a content or a media tracking service or a clipping service and how well that works. Um, and then similar to the tracking pixel with using Google tags and Google analytics to, to follow where your stories are, are republished. Um, so that, that's kind of, that's what we're looking at right now. Um, and, oh yes, anyone who has tracking pixel experience, I'd love to hear all about it because, uh, we've been, the student that works with me and I have been really diving deep into that, <laughs> um, and trying to understand it as best we can, uh, but yeah, so so that's kind of where we're at now. Um, another thing I realized is is tracking where your stories are republished is a huge part of uh, kind of knowing your impact and knowing your reach as well. And so that's a bigger topic that we're hoping to tackle as well is how are newsrooms tracking their impact? Uh, we're hopefully going to look at some different tools that are out there uh, to to make it easy for newsrooms to figure out what impact their their work is making in their community. Um, so if anybody has ideas or if you're doing impact tracking in a neat way, I'd also love to hear about that. Um, always talking about impact tracking with different different newsrooms. Um, I talked about short videos as, as something that a lot of newsrooms are always talking about. Um, YouTube shorts is something we're interested in, hopefully down the line. Um, and then chat GPT. Everyone wants to talk about chat GPT and we did too. So we we're looking into uh, what useful ways you can use, uh, not just chat GPT, but other machine learning models and um, different AI services because it's all changing so quickly. Um, and so we would love to stay on top of that and try to hopefully maybe compare different services and, and specific examples of what they might be helpful for uh, in, in journalism and in, in especially community-based newsrooms. Um, but at this point, I'm gonna pause for a second um, because I know I'm talking a lot and <laughs> I'm throwing a lot of information at you. So if you have any questions um, or ideas that you wanna talk through about uh, things that we might look at in innovation and focus, please feel free to use the chat, feel free to use Google Doc. You can raise your hand, I will be looking everywhere, uh, looking to see if, if anybody wants to, to chat about innovation and focus. All right, we have a raised hand. Where do I see that? Oh, attendees. All right, I will allow you to talk hopefully all right if you want to um unmute yourself you're welcome to to ask your question hello hi how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Um, uh, sorry, my name is uh, Musa Isa Ahmed. Uh, I'm speaking from Nigeria. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, my question is that uh, you know, uh, uh, first of all, we are talking about uh, you are talking about innovation focus uh, in Nigeria. It's a it's a very new thing in Nigeria, actually. Uh, because uh, most journalists, they don't know much about uh, innovative job in journalism. So they only focus in local journalism, uh, uh, not uh, being in a digital community like this. Um, mm -hmm. Like uh, me, I am an investigative journalist, uh, uh, been in Nigeria. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, you talk about uh, the last thing that you are talking about, the uh, tracking where republished sto uh, uh, stories go. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, uh, what are the, what are more impacts? And then what, what is the, the importance of, uh, uh, of tracking uh, where republished stories go? Uh, and after the, import uh, the importance of it, um, what do you think the benefit of it? Uh, for example, I have a story, I, I did a story in Nigeria and then I already published it in a local media house in Nigeria. 
and I wanted to publish it in a uh, in 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 another media house uh, related to uh, uh, media ethics and journalism ethics. So what's uh, what is uh, what is the full uh, understanding about that? So this is my question. Okay, great. I think yeah. I understand what you're asking, but if I miss something, let me know. Um, I think that's a really good question of why do newsrooms want to know where their stories are republished or what it, what is the importance of that? And so that's kind of where we started our exploration of this is we talked to someone at the Institute for Nonprofit News about, so why are people wanting to know where their stories are republished? Um, and that's an, it's, 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 that end goal is important when figuring out the ways that you're doing it as well. Um, so a big reason that we learned that people wanted to know where their stories are republished is to know their reach. And for example, if a news organization here in uh, mid central Missouri reported a story about something, a bill that passed in the legislature, and then someone picked it up in Northeast Missouri, uh, they would want to know, oh, there's people in Northeast Missouri reading our story. That's good to know about kind of who, who is, who is reading our content um, just in terms of, 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 of that understanding of their reach. Um, but it's, we also heard that it's helpful for building relationships. So if you find out that there is a news outlet that is, is consistently republishing your stories, maybe you can talk to them about opportunities for collaboration or working together in some way. Um, and so I think we found that more so than numbers and page views, it was about knowing that the groups of people, the communities that are reading your stories and how you can work together with, with different news organizations. Um, so I, I don't know, if, did that answer your question? Yeah, of course, very well, very well. Okay. So I get I, I get it. You answer my question very well. Um, last thing uh, I'm going to talk about is that uh, because I'm always concerned about because most of the time if I'm attending a, a kind of a, 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 a meeting like this uh, in a in a in a Europe or in America or in other places, so it's a when when I look at into it, 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 it there is a limitation of uh, black journalists uh, or African journalists. Uh, in in this kind of uh, conversation, so mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, this is a, this is a, a a little bit an advice or a little bit uh, uh, information that I need maybe uh, sorry to uh, to share about it because when I when I check all all the fellowship uh, uh, the history of the fo uh, the fellow that attend uh, the RGI fellowship uh, for the series of about uh, maybe four to five years uh, none. I, I could not find an African journalist that attend. I only found uh, one journalist and a, a white journalist who usually a freelancer who usually came to Nigeria and work here, but he is not longer living in Nigeria. He's living in an Asian country like that. So, so I don't know why uh, this opportunity was not being uh, given us maybe to, to test our ability because I'm seeing of uh, uh, almost 80 percent of what RGI are looking out at uh, as the innovation uh, uh, activities. I think uh, uh, we have in Africa, especially in Nigeria, we have like a very vast uh, uh, innovating uh, ideas. A lot, a lot. In fact, uncomfortable. So I I don't know if uh, if uh, you guys can be able to expand to uh, to do a a, a, a full research on Nigerian journalists or an African, West African journalist that they are doing good in their job. So maybe this, this, this will be a, a very case study, maybe to, to study it when after, the, after you study it, then maybe you can develop a, something, an angle that can be able to help us uh, to, uh, to come up, to come up, to understand, uh, to, to be among uh, uh, part of the world journalists. So I think uh, this is my, uh, a little piece of uh, advice about this. All right. Well, thank you so much for that feedback. I appreciate it. Um, and I think it's, yeah, definitely important to be thinking about. So th thank you for your question and thanks for, for joining today. Thank you very much.
All right. All right, I don't think I see any other questions or hands raised at this time. Um, so we can definitely keep moving. Um, but if you ever want to talk about innovation and focus ideas, a new product, a new tool, uh, a new community engagement idea, anything that is a practical uh, and new idea that you want to try in a newsroom or um, that you think would be good for us to know about, definitely feel free to reach out to me and I will um, have my contact information at the end as well. Um, so at the very basic of it, we get most of our ideas from talking to journalists and from talking to uh, people who are in the everyday of journalism, like you all are, um, about what needs they have, what challenges they face, um, and what kind of solutions they're looking for. And so sometimes it doesn't always start with a product or with a tool that we want to test, but we're looking for a way to make some area of their job, of a journalist's job, um, easier or support them in, in, in some way. Um, and so I think that would be just, just good to mention. And then so this slide will, shows you kind of what I've been doing um, over the past month and a half. I've been doing a lot of outreach uh, to, to start those conversations and to hear from uh, people uh, who are uh, doing this work all across the country, um, especially here in Missouri, but also beyond, um, and what what things that they're looking for uh, to help support their work. So I kind of wanted to highlight that a little bit, but if you have ideas of who else I should be talking to, I'm just in the early stages, so always taking recommendations, happy to set up calls. Um, all right, I see I have another question from Lindsay uh, asking if we're interested in the marketing side of journalism as well as the news side. Um, that's a really good question. I think I don't close the door to any kind of idea. I think we we touch on a lot of different topics here at RJI, including uh, revenue and supporting the sustainability of newsrooms. And so I think that that definitely plays into to, into that conversation. So uh, if you have any idea that you want to talk through, I'm definitely open to talking to, uh, about anything that's related to supporting the future of, of journalism, especially these, these community-based newsrooms. So thanks, Lindsay, for that question. And this is just a call out again to say, hey, partner with me, share your ideas with me. Um, and I'm I'm really excited to that you all are on this call and that that you're interested in innovation and focus, um, and looking forward to to keeping in touch with a lot of you. Um, here's my contact information. Um, I can it's it's in the Google Doc as well with my email address. So feel free to reach out anytime. Um, always looking forward to to chatting with people in all parts of the industry um, and learn, I'm learning as I go. So anyone who can help me learn more about what's new and what's innovative, I'm, I'm excited to do that. So that I believe is what I have for my presentation. Um, but I, so if you look at the Google doc, we have some other things just to mention. And I know Kat uh, and Scott, I think are talking about NICAR a little bit in the chat. So just a shout out that we do have NICAR breakfast coming up. Um, if you're going to be at NICAR, make sure to check out uh, RJI's breakfast and say hi to um, another member of our team, Will Logger. He's going to be there and, and talking about all sorts of things related to the work that we're doing here. Um, another upcoming event is we have the uh, 2022 fellow presentation. Um, and Kat can answer any more specific questions about that. But uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing about their projects and what they've been working on and and hearing about the resources and tools that they've created to to support uh, journalism and, and what we're doing here. So, um, all right, I think let's see, I think that's mostly everything. I'll just do another shout out if you're interested in um, signing up for our newsletter. There's a link here to do that. We're hoping that that is going to launch in the springtime and we will be able, it'll be an easier way for you to know 
each month what we're doing, what we're working on and what we're learning. Um, so let's see any other. I think we are open to partnerships anywhere as far as I know, but feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to start the conversation. Um, so happy to talk to anybody, no matter where you are, what kind of news organization you work for. Thanks, Kat. All right, let's see. I think we're we're just about good on time too. Um, so, but if anybody has any additional questions, let me know. If we didn't get to something in the chat, I think we, we answered all the questions in the chat and in the Google Doc. Um, but if you'd like to uh, set up a time to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'm always open to that as well. Um, and looking forward to staying in touch with a lot of you.